And now I'm here. <laughs> I'm all over the place. I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, got back to the house. Treated the dog. All is well. Yeah. So, bugging out, man. Yeah, and dealing with that traffic. That's that's the thing. That's going to be key is, is, is trying to get out before everybody else does. Uh, that's why a lot of us here just stay. You know, because things change, especially, you know, when, when you're dealing with, with hurricanes. I don't know how many times they said, oh my God, it's going to be a big one, mass devastation, we're all going to die. And it uh, doesn't happen. So the biggest problem the biggest problem is people. The public. Joe Q public will act a goddamn fool. You know, it's 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 amazing to watch. It really is. It's it's not not good to be a part of. <laughs> you know. For the most part, we are casualty vampires. Think about it. You hear sirens in your area, you you pull over, you're like, well, where are they going? What's going on? What's happening? You drive by a wreck, everybody's rubbernecking. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Whoa. You got, whoa. Is that, is that him over there? And over there? And over here? Ooh. That's not good. You know, we, we don't like, you know, we, we can't just turn a blind eye. We have to check it out. And, you know, you get some secondary wrecks from that. And, and that is the thing. You know, people rubbernecking, not paying attention, and boom, they hit something else. And there's another fucking accident right in front of the. Well, at least the response time will be faster. <laughs> but now they got to split. And they got to deal with, you know, you and them. So you know, it's it's best to keep your wits about you, and keep your focus and focus on everybody else. Still keeping, you know, keep a watchful eye on that situation. But you know, carry on and move on. You're gonna get a lot of that. A lot of that. Uh, if you're trying to bug out with everybody else, yeah, everybody's everybody's doing their own thing. You know, that's that's our thing. That's 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 what we do. We're Americans. We have freedom, and uh, you know, damn a turn signal. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. You should be watching me. Make sure I make sure you you don't hit me. You know. Okay. All right. And that's good. That's good to good to be that way. But you know, getting back to the traffic, you know, uh, have a plan. Have at least four ways out. Uh, the whole nomadic thing, you know. Uh, if if you are nomadic, uh, and then there there's a there's a few of us out there. I'm actually thinking about it. Get me some money and. Get me a vehicle. I've always, I've always thought about that. Get me a van or, you know, something like that, and hook it up. <laughs> Turn it into the ultimate bug out vehicle. But I, I want to be, you know, I want to be gray man with it. I don't, I don't want to. I, I want it to be. Well, for one, I want it to be secured, bulletproof, because all my gear is going to be in there. All my shit, everything I need, all my preps. Um, and then something to think about is, is are you going to be advertising? You know, I, I don't want to take my bug out vehicle and, and turn it into some kind of freaking, uh, you know, make it look like some kind of super duper four wheel drive, off road, you know, tactical vehicle with, with you know, gun ports and lights everywhere and, and, and things hanging off of it. And, uh, you know, if it's necessary, yeah, sure. So you got to think about that. Or, are you going to be able to blend in to the area? Because you're, you're going to be driving and parking. And, you know, you're going to leave your vehicle. So how secure is your vehicle? You know, most vehicles, most of these, 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 these bug out vehicles and RVs, they're not that secure. They're really not. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, really not at all. <laughs> um... 18 wheelers and, uh, you know, 
these truck drivers, I mean, they'll tell you, you, you got to make sure that your shit's secure. You know, um, we forget that glass is very, very fragile. Yeah, they do things to make it stronger and make it shatter resistant or make it shatter, uh, energy absorbent, if you will, impact absorbent and everything shatters. Now you, now it's unusable. Uh, you know, there's, there's very few multi-hit, uh, windshields out there <laughs> and, and even less, you know, side and, and rear. So th there's stuff out there, but you know, the glass is that thick and it's a lot of weight involved. So weight is very important when you're dealing with that. Uh, if you're going to secure your shit, Mo you know, <laughs> if I had a sawzall, if I, if I had a little saw, if I had a little knife, I, I, I could break into most RVs. A crowbar. I mean, it's very simple tools. A screwdriver. Very simple tools. I mean, a rock. I mean, so you have to think about that. How secure is your shit? And you're on the road. And if you are going to hide, hide your vehicle. What if somebody finds it? And you're in such a secure location. There's nobody around. You're like, well, fuck. <laughs> it's my birthday. Congratulations. And they just have, have at your stuff. Yeah. If, if you're parked in a, in a, in a, uh, more, uh, you know, more eyes upon you, then, then it's, a, it's a little different. You know, the, the criminal element has to be kind of, uh, you know, sly about it. You know, they can't break windows and stuff. If they do, somebody's going to say, Hey, what are you doing? You might call the cops. I mean, this day and age, that's it. All I got to do is just make a phone call, take a picture, take a video. Chances are they'll probably video it and put it on YouTube. Look at this. This motherfucker breaking an RV. Ain't called the cops yet. Oh, shit. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. So at least there's that. But, you know, they, they got your stuff. It's gone. Now what? You know, you're living on the road, limited resources. Uh, Make it do with what you got. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe maybe you only had, maybe you were going to resupply and just, you know, because you were out of some stuff and you come back and all your stuff is gone. You're like, man, fuck. That sucks. That was some good gear. That was some good food. I was, you know, man, they, they, they took all my coffee. Oh, <laughs> you know, and... You know that's that's the thing is 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 what do you do? What how do you secure that shit? You can't be there all the time, and you're not going to be there all the time. That's the thing. You travel around so you can go other places and do other things and see other things. You know, meet people and all that. H having a having a even if you pull into some kind of campground or something, there's still going to be grift and theft, and you got to be mindful of that. Um, so. That would be that would be my my first my first thing is is having that vehicle sound roadworthy uh, and having it secure and you know that that's that's a fine line because then you're dealing with the weight issue uh, are you gonna are you gonna put the whole you know, are you gonna plate the whole thing in AR five hundred armor that thing's gonna weigh like fifty thousand pounds. <laughs> so the bigger you have the bigger vehicle you have the more the more gas and resources that you're going to eat up and the maintenance and oh man i mean it's crazy uh but being mobile would be really cool you could run from any kind of catastrophic event you know if i was here on the beach on the on the, on the right coast and they said hurricane I'm like okay bye see ya and i'd leave like as soon as they said hurricane, you're like, ha, ha, all right, it's it's adventure time, you know, and mini vacation. All right, let's go, you know. And off I went. But uh, you know, a lot of folks can't do that. A lot of folks here. I was thinking about it. Yeah, a lot, a lot will leave. A lot. We we do have a lot of transient population. We and we do have some transplant. I'm a transplant, uh, but I've been here since oh my god, uh, 2000. I've been coming here since '94. 
Uh, so, but I don't know. Uh, a lot of folks come here. A lot of older folks come here to retire. You know, they 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 took their life savings out, and they took their four, they cashed in their four hundred one k or whatever, and boom, they just they bought some cheap property, and got a house. You know, and it's it's great for them. So they're not going to go anywhere. Maybe, maybe some will. You know, they were like, oh fuck this, I'm going back to my hometown. I'm going back to my old area, my my place of birth. Uh, place of, you know, residence, whatever, uh, you're, you're going to get that. Uh, but, you know, a lot of these folks here are stuck. So for them to leave the area, if, say, natural disaster or otherwise, you know, like I said, we're on the right coast, so you know, a lot of things can happen here. Uh, we have been seeing a lot more uh, um, military presence, but we always have had a lot of military presence, even since the 20s and 30s. This has been one of those areas. Uh, but, you know, they, they cleared out, but now they're starting to come back in and, and, and lock, you know, not just, just take up residence. You know, it's, it's, it's a contingency. Uh, like I said, Shaw Air Force Base is, is up the road a ways, hundreds of miles away. But the airplanes, <laughs> the fast movers can get here literally within like two or three minutes. I mean, they take off and they're here. <laughs> and plus their reach, they got hundreds of miles of radar and, and all that. So they can they can see the enemy before the enemy can even, you know, see them. So we have that capability. Uh, so the, the, the closer they get, you know, they can, they can engage. They can send it. But, uh, I mean, we can, if, what if that's a death? But... During a hurricane here, they 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 have uh, a lot of folks, a lot of a lot of folks that live here. Uh, you know, <coughs> a lot of folks will leave. A lot. You know, we we got like it, it used to be very small here. It used to be like. Roughly 50,000 people that lived here and over the years it's built up. I, I think we're at 300 400,000 people that live here year-round and The transient population that comes through here a lot of folks are like hey, I like this place. Let's leave. Let's stay here You know, they're there. They come to Myrtle Beach. A lot of people just come to Myrtle Beach on a, on a regular basis uh, You know, and, and there's Myrtle Beach North Myrtle Beach Georgetown uh, Myrtle Beach North Myrtle Beach are, are the the very resorty kind of areas you know, that's where all the attractions are, and, 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 you know, we got, we got a place called Restaurant Row, where everybody, it's nothing but just, you know, fine dining restaurants. <laughs> yeah, uh, and Calabash, if you know anything about what that is, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's seafood buffets out the wazoo, so that's the big thing. Get your crab legs, and, you know, get your hush puppies. <laughs> One big long John Silva. But they don't do well here, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, and, and, but the place clears out. And, uh, you know, they, they lock it down. They do the curfew thing. You can't go anywhere. If, if, if they see you anywhere, they, the, the, the police, and they're, they're, con they're on you like, what you doing? Why are you out here? You know, uh... So, unless you've got something you're doing, you know, they, they shut it down. Uh, especially if they call for a, man, a mandatory evacuation. So, we're, we're, we already know what's going to happen here if, if things start going south. And they start, you know, locking it down and moving things around. And, 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 and uh, you know, the powers that be start, you know, flexing and uh, regulating but here we we the Leos here are they got their shit together and they they're they're pretty much on board even even the National Guard that you know like I said the, it's the right coast for the reason I call it the right coast for the reason it's very right and even the Leos and even the National Guard and and, and you and you know them in the community and like yeah I'm in the National Guard been doing it for twenty years da, 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 da. yeah I'm a police department and you get to know everybody 
you know, it is still kind of a small town, especially in the areas. Uh, so you get to know them. And yeah, but they'll pull you over and go, what are you doing, bro? What you doing? <laughs> Why are you running around here during a shift event? <laughs> You're supposed to be going to Columbia. <laughs> Hundreds of miles away. Don't you know there's a storm coming and we're all going to die? Oh, yeah. But being nomadic, that that would uh, you'd have some advantages. Because as soon as... As they said something, you could go, I'm out of here, see ya, bye, you know, and, and, and just head out. Uh, van life with Gina, you know. Um, and have, having that story, and, and that, but that's the thing, is, is, is having that, having your preps. Uh, I would cash, I would, I would make caches everywhere, I would, around, and, and keep, and have your route, but your caches have to be secure. Uh, they have to be concealed and secure, so uh, you know, so they don't get compromised while you're away. Because that would suck if if you were on your last uh, last bit of water, last bit of gas, last bit of oil, last bit of whatever, and uh, freedom seeds or whatever, and you you get to your cache and it's gone. There's just a you know an empty hole in the ground with some dirt everywhere and some and some trash. And you're like, fuck. Well, what do I do next? <laughs> uh, <laughs> You better, you better be quite resourceful uh, in that aspect. So, ha having that idea of being nomadic, you, you, you'd ha the, it, I think it's easier. It would be a lot easier if you had one location, or two, or four, uh, where you could just boom, 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 boom. Just go here, go here, go here. And, you know, like I said, uh, preliminary, alternative, contingency, and emergency. So, you know, and that was that was your setup. That was your bug out setup. Uh, but being nomadic, absolutely possibilities are endless. You can go everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. And, and then, of course, you could have friends, like-minded friends. You know, your, your mag might be spread out across the whole United States or the East Coast or the West Coast. So you can be like, just, hey, can I come stay with you? Uh, okay, come on. And... There you are, and if you don't like it, okay, I gotta buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so being being mobile like that, that that would that would have some advantages. Uh, might be something I'm into. But I still want land. I, I think land would be very important because then I could, I could hey, come on, come on over, nomad. Plop a squat. You know, here's some food. Here's some. You know, get you a plate. Here's your drink. Uh, here's a nice washcloth. Wash your face. Go take a shower. Have a seat by the fire. Let's talk. Yeah. Uh, I like that idea. You know, being 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 hospi hospitable. Uh, that's something I took from the from the Norse that I like. And and here in the South, we're like that anyway. Uh, that's why we have porches. <laughs> that's why there's sweet tea and beer. <laughs> you know. Uh, a lot of folks entertain folks in their garage. You know, they just open up the garage. Come on in, have a seat. You know, pull out that unfolding freaking chair. Pop it out. Have a seat. Grab a beer. Let's talk. You know, you want a barbecue? <laughs> pull out. You want to grill something? So yeah, you know, uh, I like that. I like that. And. That that appeals to me, but but he, be, being able to to not only just bug out, but just boom, nomadic, hit the road, be Mad Max. You know, uh, you don't have to be crazy Mad Max, but I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't like living in my little car. That would suck. Of course, I'm probably gonna do that anyway. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that might be an option. Uh, I'm 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 debating whether or not to put everything in a five by five or a ten by ten. Five by five is cheaper. Ten by ten is more. One is forty five. One is eighty. You know, if I get a five by five storage unit, then I I have to be very uh, uh, picky about what goes in there. Uh, ten by ten, I can just put everything in there because that's like a hundred square foot. Shit, I could live in that thing if I wanted to, but. You don't want to be doing that. I'll get you. Uh, and, and what I thought about that was if I did 
put my stuff in a storage unit. Would I want it inside or an outside? Inside, it's more secure, which means it's harder to get to. You know, there's codes. You know, usually they, usually they give you a code or a key card and beep and tick -tick -tick, beep and you go in through the door. You know, what if there's no no uh, no power? How are you gonna get to your shit? You know, say I'm bugging out and I hit the hit the storage unit, you know, to get those those necessary items, and uh, I can't get in. You know, what do you do? Do you break in? I mean, that's that's gonna be crazy. And and what if you what if, that's gonna be hard? Kind of hard. Kind of hard. You know, they're, they're kind of hardened structures. Uh, and and if you do start breaking in, does somebody does somebody respond to that? Hey, what the fuck you doing? You know, they roll up on you like, what the fuck you doing, man? So, uh, yeah. having having it outside, yeah, it's it's not as uh, it's not climate controlled. So anything that you put in there, you 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 have to weather. You have to you have to uh, harden it, reinforce it against the weathering, uh, because we here here we have a lot of humidity, and humidity sucks. It really sucks. I mean. You put anything metal outside, or or in your shed or whatever, or, or or any kind of preps, you know, any kind of grain or flour or anything like that, and it's it, it's not, you know, it's it's not sealed against the uh, the the elements. It's it's you're going to get all kinds of humidity problems. Uh, rust is a big thing, you know. So, uh, and then you know, you, you go to open your bag of flour and it's a brick, <laughs> and then that that in turn brings the brings the bugs and so you know having that having the mylar bags and the in the buckets and and all that we talked about the pest control in the shift so you're going to be storing that stuff in a outside uh outside um storage unit that you can get to if anything i can always just pop the lock with a with a bolt cutter or a hammer they're not that hard <laughs> some you can do with a magnet yeah, just check all that shit out. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, fucking crowbar. I mean, it, so it's not outside. Would not be that secure, but somebody would have to know where it's in, where it's at. Uh, maybe they do. Maybe they watched you come in and out with all this stuff. You know, there's video cameras everywhere. So having a storage unit, owning a storage unit, can be like, hmm. Yeah, I see number 46 over there. Uh, oh, number 57 is bringing in some good-looking gear. Hmm. So, you know, you take note of that and go get it. Why not? There's no rule of law. Whatever. Go get that shit. So, you know, you have to worry about that. That's that's one of my, my problems, too, my issues. I mean, because you paying them make keeps them honest until you're not paying them anymore, and they auction off your shit. That's another issue. Am I going to be able to make that money? Because, you know, you know, you better, you better, you better plan for that as well. So maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe you're nomadic and you run around, you have storage units everywhere. Then you're going to have to have money. Do you have income to keep those preps and those necessary items scattered all over the place? A storage unit would be pretty cool if you had the money, uh, you know, or somebody's home. Somebody's land. Say, hey, you know, I don't want to stay at your land, but I want to store some items on your property. Can I can I set up a storage unit and lock it and just forget about it? Yeah, uh, sure. Why not? You know that that might be an idea. So uh, especially if 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 you have like a lot of like minded individuals like we are, like we are here. Uh, I know some other channels. Uh, one of the three. You know, they, that was a great idea. This this whole underground, the 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 prepper underground, <sighs> so romantic. But there are a lot of a lot of issues with that. You know, uh, especially with security. So maybe having a storage unit off site from your land, and that you just you know, like, yeah yeah man, go ahead and set up. I got a conics box, or I built a I built a fortified shed. And, You've got the lock and key. I don't, you, know, you do. So there you go. And you can barter and trade with it. Hey, I'll, uh, I can, uh, every time I come by, I give you something. I, I drop off something in the, uh, in the, uh, the collection, the donation box. 
you know, the no, you know, put something in the donation bucket, you know, and, and it could be a set of items that, you know, maybe food, maybe freedom seeds, maybe water, whatever, you know, maybe that you came from one area and you're in this area and you need some kind of part or material to, to help you out. Uh, you know, you need this necessary part and this person over here in this area says, yeah, I got that. And you just, cause you're going that way anyway, you know, like a delivery system. Yeah. Prepper, a prepper delivery system. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, there, there's a lot of us that are, that, that work on the road. So that's, that's an interesting idea. So I'm just, I'm just brainstorming over here now getting into all this craziness. Wow. Uh, cause we do that anyway. I mean, it's, it's, you know, the logistics, you know, of, of all that, it's, it's pretty, uh, can get pretty, uh, pretty ornate, uh, sometimes and, and complex, but you know, the, uh, the pony delivery system, that was, that was pretty cool. It's just, you know, people on horseback with, you know, mail pouches running through Indian territory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Oh shit. Yeah. Yo, I'm just trying to get, I'm just trying to deliver the mail, man. I'm trying to get to Texarkana. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that, the banks, the idea of banks came from the Knights Templar. You know, uh, you would get on, you would, you would stay, you would, you would enter at the Silk Road and all your gold and all your, your money and value, you know, mostly current currency, you would give the, to the Knights Templar at one location. They would give you a slip of paper, a receipt going, yep, hang on to that. And when you get to the end of the Silk Road, there'd be another Knights Templar place. And they would go, mm -hmm. oh, okay. And they would give you back your pot of gold or your silver or whatever you had, whatever you turn, whatever the currency was. And, uh, and, you know, between the Silk Roads was wrought with, with thieves and marauders and raiders you know, and they, they took full, cause it was, you're, you're traveling through the wilderness. So, uh, you know, that's, that's where the banks came from, from the Knights Templars. And they got so freaking rich off of that. Really rich. Because what happens <laughs> you're in this location, you're trying to get to the, through this, through this very, very dangerous area to get to this area and you die, you get marauded. You get taken down, and marauders see this piece of paper, and they're like, the fuck is this? Whatever. Yeah, throw that shit away. Wipe my ass with it. I'm going to burn it in my fire. Or maybe they try, you know, they, they even actually would try and, and, and cash in. Oh, hey, yeah, this is so-and-so. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they would just keep it. Templars would just keep it. They're like, no. Yeah. Oh, well. Damn. Sucks to be you. <laughs> so they had to have, but but to do that, they had to have the money uh, and, and the gold and all that. So uh, that's something. That's something indeed. Uh, something. But in, in, in a prepper prepper kind of world, you could you could kind of do that uh, and and have that set up. And and yeah. But then that's that's when the communication comes into play. Communication credentials. And that might be something that we have to do is, is go nomadic. It's definitely a thought, definitely something, definitely something to it. You know, uh, as a, as a, as a nomadic person, nah, I would, I would group it up, you know, at least, at least two or three vehicles that, cause that way then you have a, a, a nomadic mag, <laughs> I mean, you look. You look at the. Uh, you, you look. You look at the. Uh, the Mongolians and the, and you know they they still live a Mongo uh, a nomadic lifestyle and they but they live as a tribe as a family, and they just go from one place to the next and they they basically you know they they, they pack it all on their on their uh, their beast of burden and they go to an area and boom bust out their yurks, and uh, yurks are pretty cool by the way. Interesting. And there you go. Boom. Set up shop. Drink some yak's milk. <laughs> Yummy. Mm. Fermented yak's milk. 
And that's another thing to talk about is fermentation. It's good to get fermentation in you. Uh, that's going to be very important. So we found that out, didn't we? You know, in the, in the older times, in the medieval ages. Having a lot of activity outside. A lot of activity. People just walking around. Of course I know who they are. Usual suspects. But anyway. Uh, damn, it's 30 minutes me rambling. I don't know. Maybe you guys find this interesting. Uh, definitely something to think about as I'm standing by to hear if I've got a bug out. <laughs> or if I get to stay. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. The uncertainty. It's kind of exciting. <laughs> but, uh, I just hope it doesn't... Uh, we're supposed to have good weather for the next uh, next week or so. So, I mean, they're talking about like, tomorrow is going to be 60. But later on, I, th I think it's going to get down to freezing. You know, maybe... So they think. I don't know. Who knows? You know, maybe later on next week or something. I don't know. You know, meteorology is not an exact science. But Amanax, Amanax. That's another. We're gonna lo, we're, we're gonna talk about that later on in the next episode because we're already at thirty minutes. This is Mad Shad signing off.